Here YouTube, I'm back again today for another weekly video log. It is Monday, May 16th. I hope you're doing well because I'm doing very well myself. And this week I'm excited to talk about games, games, and more games. And in particular this week we're going to be talking about my top 12 Viticulture Visitor Cards. And you're like, why top 12? Why not top 10? Well, you're lucky it's not a top 23. Because I love Viticulture and when I was whittling down cards I started with like 34 potential cards. It was that difficult for me. So I stuck with 12. Then we're going to talk about the games that I got a chance uh, to play and the games I got in the mail. And also we're even going to be unboxing two pieces of mail I got. Who knows what they could be? Who knows? But we're going to do all that after we do the Viticulture list. Because I imagine many people are going to click on this just for the Viticulture list. So... Let's go ahead and get to my top 12 Viticulture Visitor cards. Some are from the summer, some are from the winter. Uh, I do have both expansions, the More Visitor expansion and the Tuscany expansion. So I've, uh, that's all the cards I have. If there's a future expansion, then maybe I'll update this list. Who knows? So I want to say these are not the most powerful cards in the game, but these are the cards that I really like to get. And I'll explain why I like those cards. So first and foremost... Number 12, we have the Innkeeper. And she almost did not make the list. And the Innkeeper, as you play this card, put the top card of two different discard piles into your hand. Now, this is a really powerful card for a couple different reasons. First, you can pick and choose what cards you want to get. And you're also trading one card for two cards, which I really like. So if someone plays some fantastic, amazing winner card and it's just sitting there, you're like, oh, that card would be perfect for me. You can just go, bloop pick it up if you play this and you could potentially get uh, a wine order that you absolutely need or a plant that would fit into your field perfectly it's a very versatile card one i really like a lot it almost didn't make the list but it snuck in at number 12 that is the innkeeper and that is from the original i do believe uh, so the next one is the advanced uncertified onaologist and this one age all of your wine uh, in your cellar twice or lose one victory point to upgrade your cellar to the next level and this can be huge especially if you have a lot of wine if this is coming towards like the 80 75 percent mark of the game and you got the large cellar and you got maybe five six bottles of wine in there this can be monumental not to mention the fact it's great at the beginning of the game too because you can just get rid of that victory point and boom you can upgrade that cellar and you'll make back that victory point hopefully relatively quick so a card i really really like that is the advanced uncertified onologist that is number 11 moving on to number 10 we have the Uncertified Architect, and I like that card. I just like the name of that card. So it's the Uncertified, he's, he's a guy I know. He's good with wood, you'll like him. Uh, the Uncertified Architect, choose up to two structures that cost three or less. Build them for one victory point each instead of Lyra. Now, I like cards like this. This is a card that can really jumpstart you at the beginning of the game, especially if you're hoping to plant a lot of things, because this can get your uh, your yoke, your trellis, your irrigation. This thing can get you up and running very quickly. Fantastic card to play very early. Uh, not so good towards the end of the game, which the original Viticulture cards had that sort of issue where they'd be really good at the beginning or really good at the end or in the middle. Um but still, a great card, really like it. That is the Uncertified Architect, a great way to jumpstart your game of Viticulture. So, moving on to the single digits, number nine, we have the Advanced Wine Critic. And you get to draw two purple cards, which are the wine orders, just for a refresher, or discard one wine of value seven or more to gain four victory points. So this is a really good one to me because... It lets you do winter actions in the summer, which can potentially help you plan for the winter. Because we've all run into that scenario where like, I don't need to do anything in the summer. I don't need to do anything in the winter. But with this card, that could potentially flip that problem on its head. Also, it's a four-point swing. I mean, if you just have that wine sitting in your cellar towards the end of the game and you're like, I can't get the wine order card that I need, you know, because uh, what I like to call it is going fishing for wine cards, then this is a great way to gain four points. And in the summer season, because you know, once you get to the winter season, everybody's going to be trying to play blue cards. Everybody's going to be trying to fill wine orders and make wine. And you can be like, hey, I got my four points in the summer. I don't need to worry about that. So the advanced wine critic really liked that card. 
Next card is the, I believe this is number 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, is the Grape Thief. And I really like this card. This is in the More Visitors expansion. I think this is the first card. Yeah, this is the first card I've shown off from the More Visitors expansion. Harvest an opponent's field for yourself. The opponent may still harvest this field this year. So this is just a really cool card. I love this card. Because you might be doing the strategy where you're doing minimal harvesting. And this could potentially get you a lot of grapes, a lot of good grapes. Uh, so I really like that card. It lets you harvest a fantastic field. It lets you do a harvest action on somebody else's field. So really big fan of this one. Just because of its unique, I think. Really just because it's a unique card. And that is the Grape Thief. Probably could have been lower. But still, I like the card a lot. So, next card that I have, number seven, is the Advance Merchant. And this was in the uh, Tuscany. Anytime you see the Advanced on there, that means it's in the Tuscany because they had a lot of Advanced cards that uh, improved the original cards. And, I, and when I say improved, I actually mean improved. I think most of them did, so I could probably just get rid of this. Um, so, Advanced Merchant, pay three coins, Lyra, to place one value red and white grapes on your crush pad or fill one wine order and gain one point extra. So this is a nice versatile card. It helps you in the summer or it helps you in the winter. This is a great card to play early on as well. I mentioned earlier, uh, which one was it? The Uncertified Architect. This is another great card because you can just get those grapes on your crush pad early and they can just start slowly, slowly, slowly building themselves up as you build other things up. So you don't even have to worry about those grapes. I like that an awful lot. Then you can turn around later, maybe sell those for money, turn them into wine, do whatever. Very versatile card, one I really like a lot. That is the Advanced Merchant. Great card to draw. So, number one, two, three, four, five, six. Number six, we have the Grand Sponsor. And this is from the More Visitors expansion. This one is going to allow you to gain seven coins or two victory points. But at the end of the game, if you don't have at least four on the residual money track that you get for uh, filling wine orders, you lose four victory points. There's a couple different cards like this in the More Visitor expansion. I really like these cards. They're a little bit of higher risk, higher reward. You keep them in front of you. They're just nagging you like, oh, man, I'm only at three on that track. I really need to get up there. Uh, so I like that a lot. It also it gives you something to build to, which is always a good thing. Um, so, yes, really like this one. Grand sponsor. If you can get it early, this is in your starting, uh, starting cards. Fantastic card to play. So continuing on to number five, we have... The oh no, that's my number one. Don't see that. We have the counterfeiter, and I really like the counterfeiter. So you gain three lira or fill one wine order, even if the type of wine doesn't match the wine order. So it says you need like a nine sparkling, and all you have is a nine red. Guess what? You got the counterfeiter, and you get to do it. Plus, you gain money, so you're going to be gaining money. Or excuse me, no, you don't get it's or my mistake. So you can either gain money, which yeah, is bland, or you can fill a wine order, which is going to get you on the residual money track, and it can get you a good chunk of victory points. Very useful card. That is the counterfeiter, one I really like to get. That's one of those ones that you hold on to for the right situation when you draw that perfect, maybe that five-point victory card, that, that wine order. So number four card, we have the exporter. And this one, choose one option. Make up to two uh, make up to two wine, or fill one wine order, or discard one uh, grape to gain two victory points. I just like versatile cards, and this one is a great versatile card. No matter what stage you are in the game, uh, mid-game, end-game, beginning of the game, the, well, I guess very at the very beginning it's not useful, but mid-game, late-game, there's something here that is going to be useful to you. Either fill or get rid of your grapes to gain two victory points. Maybe that's the extra two victory points that wins you the game Really like this card. Maybe it shouldn't be this high. You know, looking at it now, probably should have bumped it down five or six spots, maybe even trimmed it off. But still, a card I really like, that is the exploit. So, moving on to the top three. got some heavy hitters going on here. Number three. Man, I keep grabbing that one. That's number one. Is the Fruit Dealer. And this is from the More Visitors card. I love this one. And this might... This one, the top three was really hard for me to decide which one I like the best. The Fruit Dealer opens up a completely new strategy, which is awesome because there's tons of strategies to win this game. Pay $4 to place this card on a field. Simple enough, right? Whenever this harvest, whenever you harvest this field, gain $2 or one victory point. So yes, this is another way to gain victory points each and every turn. 
So I love this card, not to mention it's even more versatile. Like it doesn't just open up a new strategy to gain victory points. You could potentially use it for coins. Maybe you're hard up for coins. You really need those two coins. Boom. Now you're getting two coins when you harvest the field. Very useful card. Love this card. Uh, that is the Fruit Dealer. One of my favorite cards from the More Visitors expansion. Number two, we have the Zymologist. Zymologist. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Make up to two wine up to value four or greater. A value four or greater. Even if you haven't upgraded your cellar. So this one is fantastic. This one has won me a game before because I've been doing strategies where maybe I got the windmill and I'm giving people tours, windmill tours, but I'm not really filling that many wine orders. This one can let you fill maybe just that one big wine order that's just going to put you over the top that nobody sees coming. You laying down like a five wine order because you can make the wine because you got the grapes. Very useful, versatile card. Really like it. The Zymologist. So... My number one card. And I have a feeling some people are going to disagree with this and say, eh, they're going to scoff at it. But number one is actually from, uh, yeah, it's not from that. It's the Cultivator. And I believe this one is from the Tuscany expansion. The Cultivator. You plant one green card. Simple enough, right? You plant a green card. But you may plant it on a field even if the total value of that field exceeds the max vine value. So what this card means is you can have a super field that is just pumping out powerful grapes and I love it. And yes, you know, it's only useful if you're really doing a strategy where you're trying to get, uh, you know, fill wine orders, but still, well, I guess if you're selling grapes too, it's pretty useful as well. But love this card. Whenever I get this card, it immediately kind of shifts how I'm playing the game because now I'm like, all right, I'm going to have a super mount mega powerful field and I, and I just love doing that uh any cards that let you break rules of games i'm generally a big fan so my number one the cultivator um but i love the game love viticulture if you've not played it yet highly recommend it even though i will say i do recommend getting the uh advanced version or the the newer version of the game that has the grande worker i've never played the older version without the grande worker but i could see it not being nearly as good as the re the uh the new one so those are my top 12 viticulture cards of all time. So visitor cards, let me know in the comments below what you think, which ones you hate, which ones you like. Let me know. And uh, let's get ahead and talk about some games, games, and more games. So some games that I got in the mail. First one is Common Decency. And I actually got a chance to play it this weekend. This is a very simple adult party game from uh, England, I'm assuming, where you are going to start off the game and you're going to have X amount of cards that will look something like this. And I'm not going to read them out to you because they are not suitable for work. Some of them are. Uh, but let's see if I can find a clean one. You discover your grandfather was certainly a war criminal and instrumental in the Holocaust. Do you report it? Two equally good friends of yours are getting married. You learn that one of them has been having an affair. Do you tell the other one? The cheater has refused to do anything. Would you nosh off your boss for a promotion with a 10% chance of being caught? Not sure what nosh off means, but I think that's not suitable. But since I'm not sure... Uh, you get it. So they're, they're going to be inappropriate, kind of out there, you know, maybe a little bit risque, uncomfortable questions. And then you're going to be dealt one card that it will say yes, it'll say no, or it says it depends on. And then you have to play a card and say, I think Larry has this answer that I have down here. So you read out the card. Larry says whether or not yes, no, or it depends on. If you get it correct, then you lose the card. So it's a very simple, light party game. Um, I'm going to do a review on it in the near future because we got a chance to play it for a couple hours uh, last weekend. It, it went over really well this past weekend. We had a lot of fun with it, uh, but it was a drinking beer and pretzels kind of game, not taking it too seriously, don't really care about the score kind of thing. It's an adult party game, which isn't going to be for everybody. It's good. You know, I, I worry about the lack of cards, but still, I'm going to give it a recommendation. It's fun. It's simple. It's light. It's compact and easy to learn, easy to teach, which is always good for an adult party. So common decency from doesn't have from James and Willie G is uh, it's good it's decent if you're in the market for a light light adult party game and you like collecting them then yeah I'd check it out so next I'm gonna be talking about we didn't play test this legacies I've been playing this for now uh, two or three months with my game group on a routine basis if you've never didn't never played we didn't play test this it is an absolutely zany out there game where you're gonna you're gonna have two cards in your hand you draw a card then you play a card and you're just trying not to lose the game. And along the way, you're going to have to be buying like a sheep and switching seats or doing this or doing that, doing all sorts of zany stuff. 
Uh, but this actually is a legacy game, which means as you play the game more and more with the same game group, you'll be able to draw icons, inside jokes, write your name on it. And I'll put it very simply. If we didn't play test this as a game itself doesn't turn you off and you have a routine game group, absolutely recommend checking out this game. It is a lot of fun. Uh, my review should be coming up in the next week or two, maybe. I got a lot of stuff to put out. Uh, but yes, we didn't play test this. Legacy's very, very fun if you have a routine game group. Not to mention, it's pretty cheap, too. So, next game I got in the mail was Saga of the Northmen. This is a new game coming out from Minion Games, uh, two to four players. And it's got an interest. It's a Viking-themed game where you're going to be uh, trying to gain influence on a board. So it's got an area control aspect to it, but there's also a ticket to ride aspect to it where you're trying to conquer different parts of this uh, this board right here but then also have survivors or whatever they are on a different part of the board so you have to be focused on winning and then also winning and then going to different connected areas but it's it's different because you have two types of troops so you can maybe sail through the sea or you can you have hard you know people troops it's kind of hard to explain without really going in depth about it um it's interesting though. Uh, I'm enjoying it so far. My wife likes it. It definitely is a step up from say like your ticket to ride. But I feel like if you like your ticket to ride, if you like area control, this might be one you want to check out. Two to four players, restricted player count, which I don't like, but still one I'm probably going to give a recommendation. Plays well at all the different player counts. Saga of the Northmen. Um, I'm enjoying it. You'll probably see a review of this up in the next couple weeks. Next, we got a chance to play Escape the Room, Mystery at the Stargazer's Manor from Think Fun. We played this at game night. If you watched my last week's video, you know I was exceedingly excited for this. Did it live up to my expectations? No, it did not, unfortunately. Um, it was still an interesting experience, but it was an interesting one-time experience, and it's aimed at families, I do think, because we we crushed the thing. We had two people who are experienced escape, uh, escape room people, like they've done three or four of them, which could have been a problem as well. But it was still a fun experience. I enjoyed it. It was on the shortest side. But looking at it as a family game, if you have kids ages 10 plus, this is this is a no-brainer. Also, higher player counts, I don't recommend it. You want to be at the 3 to 5 player count. Um, a cool little idea, though. I, I, I would like to check out the future ones. Escape the Room, Mystery at the Stargazer's Manor. Interesting, interesting game. One that I will recommend if you're looking at it as a family game. Next game I got in the mail was Honeycomb. I know nothing at all about this game. The rules are one page, so it can't be too complex, right? Uh, but it says it's a simple, quick tile laying game where you're going to be laying down honeycomb tiles and doing various different things. Maybe you'll see a live playthrough of this with me and my wife in the near future. Um, yeah, that's all I can tell you about it. Hopefully, I'll tell you more about it next week. I got a lot of I got a lot of Kickstarter stuff to talk about. Anything else we got to talk about? No, we do not. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to... Oh, yeah, I did get one more game. I almost forgot about it. Cthulhu Flux. It's $2. The, Am the Barnes & Noble Red Dot sale. It was sitting there. I was like, eh, 2 bucks. Why not? I could do a review of it, and then I could probably sell it for, like, 2 bucks somewhere at a thrift shop or something eventually. And plus, it'll be another video. Yeah, I have a problem. I know. I've reviewed like four or five other versions of Flux, but not the Cthulhu one. So maybe this one will blow my mind. I do currently own one version of Flux. I've enjoyed Flux. I do enjoy Flux. Batman Flux is the one version of Flux that I have kept. Even though I like Holiday Flux better. I just don't know where it went. I think I let somebody borrow it. They just never brought it back. I think that's actually happened with a couple games. I just forget about it and they forget about it. And yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Plenty of games. So let's go ahead and open two things we will see what they are one of them i know partially what it is so we'll open that one second but i don't know what this is so this is from chris and yeah it's to me so let's open it up maybe it's a game as my son says i think it's a game he likes to open things with me so we have a game it is a game it is a game. he really wanted this game to be well taken care of so let's open it up and see what it is oh it is. Come on, open up. Scrambo, the dice game. Scrambo, the dice game of quick thinking categories. I'm assuming this is. Oh, yeah, this is a Kickstarter prototype. I don't even remember saying yes to it, but it looks pretty promising. Uh, Scrambo, the dice game of 
quick thinking categories. Uh, sounds like a two plus player. So this is going to be a quick playing dice party game. Looks very cool. I'm excited to try it out. Looks like it's kind of like a sports movie, candy, food, bugs. Looks like, uh, looks like a very cool game. I'm actually excited to try this one out. Hopefully I'll get that to the table tonight with my wife to see uh, before I get it to the game, game table this week. Looks like a nice filler game. I'm actually hoping now that somebody's running about 20 minutes late to my game night so I can bust this out on game night and give you my impressions next week. So, I did not know what that one was, but I do know what this one is. So as many of you know, I've been running another Gen Con Bonanza Kickstarter where we go to Gen Con and we shoot uh, over 100 videos. Last week, year we did like 110. This year, I'm hoping to do even more. And I'm actually probably just going to do an episode about that when it gets closer to the Kickstarter, which hopefully will be next month. Uh, but this is from Yellow. Yes, Yellow. King of Tokyo, King of New York uh, fame. And they are one of the supporters of our Kickstarter. And I know they are sending me promos and they're sending me stickers. So let's see what they sent. Ooh. So everybody's going to get a cool King of Tokyo sticker if you back that pledge level. So we have 50 stickers right here. That's awesome. Nice little swag. And then, oh, sweet. They sent me King of Tokyo promo packs, and this is going to go into that level. And, and man, I tell you, I tell you what, Yellow is a fantastic company. You know, I don't really talk too much about different companies, you know, just because it doesn't come up. But there are some that are just, they go above and beyond to support, you know, small, small guys like me and, and other uh, reviewers as well and podcasters. And Yellow is definitely one of those companies. We've, we've interviewed them the last two years at Gen Con. They're more than happy to send out review, co the, give me the review copies at Gen Con. You know, they've hooked me up with posters to put up, you know, to advertise games in the background. And now this, I mean, this is 50 of these packs. So that is, oh man, just a great company. Lots of great companies. But... Anywho, man, I love our hobby. So I hope you are having a great week. I am doing fantastic right now. My Miami Heat lost last night, which kind of stinks, but I'm about to review Trump the game, and I think I'm going to set it on fire. Uh, I'm going to shave my beard for it, do all sorts of zany stuff, who knows. And i uh, about to go to the zoo, uh, but the semester's over. I've done six reviews in the last day and a half, so boom, I've clean, cleaned out my garage. Loving the free time. I hope you are having a great week as well. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.